Okay, welcome back to Daryl D TV and to part five of my Richard Corbin comic collection so far. I have to tell you, since I've been back here in Arizona, I have been finding lots of cool Corbin books. I've uh, been having a great time going around the city, checking out uh, so many comic shops and, and what they have. And you know, when I was in Michigan for the last year, you know, there was only so many shops there. There were two in town in the small town of Battle Creek that I was in. And then there were a couple uh, over in Kalamazoo, Michigan. Um, most of the Corbin books that I picked up while I was there, uh, I bought online. But there were a few that I did uh, find at the comic shops, maybe less than 10. So uh, I've been back for probably a week and a half now and uh i've just been making my rounds i still got um maybe another 10 shops to hit maybe eight eight or ten something like that and so uh i've just been finding some cool stuff and now i'm going to share those with you um i probably at this point about 150 uh books in somewhere around there i haven't really counted um, but I'm, I'm really um, marking uh, titles off of the list. And uh, I think I have roughly maybe another 15 or 20 copies, maybe, uh, that I'm trying to uh, get my hands on. Now, this is not counting uh, the comic magazines that uh, Corbin worked on. So... I hopefully will maybe one day get to collect those, but a lot of those are very expensive, especially like the Eerie and the uh, uh, Creepy magazines. Uh, those are really popular. People are really looking for those. So we'll just see. Right now I'm looking for, you know, everything he has in comic form. So let's see what I picked up, okay? So the first one I want to show you is aliens alchemy and uh this is a dark horse book this is uh issue number three of a three issue series did i say that right issue number two of a three issue series so of course i'm looking for issue one and two of this and if you just look at this look at that that's that court classic corbin look i love his artwork so much his colors like he is definitely unmatched in this game and uh, I'm not really the type to do a lot of shout outs but I've been so excited about uh, visiting some of these shops here and so I do want to give some attention to some of the shops that uh, I've been picking uh, some of these books up at so for this uh, issue Aliens Alchemy uh, I got to shout out Dreadnought Comics here in uh, Northwest Phoenix, if you will. I think that's the right area of town. So uh, big ups to them and this book. They actually, if you're ever in town, they're a really, really interesting store uh, to look at. Their display racks are very interesting. They have a ton of back issues, a ton of uh, Marvel, not Marvel, but comic magazines. Um, an array of comic magazines and pop culture magazines and I always you know um, give a lot of props to those that uh, have a, a really nice uh, back stock of comic magazines because that's a passion of mine as well and then they had a couple other uh, Corbin books that I got my eye on I'm just kind of hoping they have a sale before the end of the year so maybe I can grab those for a little cheaper they're a little more than I'd like to pay at this time all right, so next up, I finally found uh, issue number six on Marvel Comics of Ghost Rider. You know, there was uh, issue six and issue seven of this book. Uh, I showed you seven in a, a previous uh, video, but I was able to get my hands on issue number six. I'm not a huge Ghost Rider fan. I never have been. Don't know a whole lot about that story. But I bought this one strictly for the artwork. And I'm looking forward to uh, seeing what kind of storyline this has. 
I cannot I cannot remember the store where I got this book I believe actually what, what, what store was that I, I, I don't remember hopefully I can remember and come back to it but I'm not sure I can't remember exactly where I picked this up we'll come back to it but Ghost Rider number seven Marvel Comics now this uh, next couple of books I want to show you are just examples of Corbin doing the cover art uh, opposed to him you know doing the book or some type of uh, writing or art inside the book he only did the cover art on on these this is a uh, star the slayer or max comics this is issue number two and issue number three so I'm still looking for one and four on that that's not Corbin what is and a special shout out to uh, drawing the comics here in Glendale Arizona downtown Glendale they're really really great shop lots of back issues uh, these happen to be on sale so I think I got them for a couple bucks a piece something like that um, there were only four issues in this run and uh, so yeah I'm still looking for issue number one and issue number four so I'm looking forward to those issues uh, big ups to drawing the comics Glendale Arizona much love to those guys okay next up on the list is the first how would you call this the first the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles comic because I know there's a ton of them now this was the very first one uh, this was 1990 uh, what number is this I, I don't know what number I want to say six and seven it's not here on the cover and I forgot to take a look inside to see um, but look at that artwork now originally when I found out about this title um, obviously I wanted it but when I found out that what was in here was just uh, I believe uh, there was a small sample of Corbin's book Rip in Time featured in the back of this book and so because it wasn't really a Corbin book and I, I wasn't really uh, you know I was trying to find just the comics where he did the writing and the uh, the artwork first and foremost but I just happened to come across this while I was digging uh, when I got back in town and I actually found this at Samurai Comics in Central Phoenix and uh, it was like 10 bucks and these books go for a lot more than that normally so I was like cool and besides the ripping time sample in the back you still have the artwork there on the front which is classic so I definitely uh, I'm glad I picked this up. I would have picked it up regardless as long as the price was was decent. And I do believe that there are maybe two more Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle books, if I'm not mistaken, that feature Richard Corbin uh, samples of uh, Rip and Time in the back of the book. Uh, I think there's one, this might be the only one that has the cover art. I believe the other ones do have uh, different artists on the front of the book, but I'm not sure. But this, uh, I would definitely say, is the best out of the ones because he is featured on the cover. So, classic Richard Corbin there. Now, there's a new shop that opened here uh, recently. Uh, they, uh, they're in West Phoenix, uh, Sun City, I believe. A um, little, little far out there, but it's a nice, cool little shop, and I was glad that I got a chance to go in there. Um, and there I picked up Erie, number one on Dark Horse. Now, the name of that shop was Ghost Cactus Comics. Um, big ups to them. This is uh, the Erie comic book is much like the Erie magazine where there are multiple artists, multiple 
uh, writers and multiple stories. And as you can see, where is it? Right down here, you got Bruce Jones and Richard Corbin on a collaboration in this book. Very reasonably priced. Uh, I was glad I picked this. This is the first Erie that I was able to pick up. Uh, Erie comic book that I was able to find featuring Richard Corbin. I'm not exactly sure how many times Corbin was in here, but this is issue number one. Pristine condition. So glad I picked it up. I'm looking forward to reading this. Now, as I've said in previous videos, I've been accumulating these books so fast that I've barely had time to even flip through a lot of them. So the books that I'm showing you, I've not read at all. I'm not familiar with them as far as I know. Uh, but uh, soon, soon, I'm, I'm taking my time. I'm starting from the beginning. Uh, I have uh, gone back and read some of the titles uh, like uh, Son of Mutant World. I've gone back and read that again. Uh, the Hulk book, which I love, the four issue series with Doc Samson. I've gone back and read that a couple times. So I'm taking my time with these, but this Eerie book is just fantastic um, and it's uh, much like the magazine thank you to Ghost Cactus Comics in Sun City Arizona next up Dark Horse Comics presents this is issue number 16 and these are 64 page books really thick uh, again, multiple stories, multiple artists, multiple uh, writers in here. And Corbin is one of the many that's featured in here. I, I'm not sure if he did the whole uh, story himself, meaning the writing as well as the art, or if he collaborated with someone. I'm not exactly sure. But there are a number of these uh, that came out a good... Mm, well, let's see what I have. I also have uh, issue number 12 of Dark Horse Presents. These books retail for $7.99 a title. So that's basically what I've been paying for them uh, as far as uh, the back issues. And these books came from a store called... Greg's Comics in Mesa, Arizona. Now we're going to come back to Greg's Comics in just a bit because there's a little bit more backstory uh, with the books that I found over there. But uh, Howard, the owner, great guy. Um, if you're ever in Mesa, Arizona or in the Phoenix metropolitan area, you definitely, definitely want to check that place out. Okay, moving right along. This uh, was two nights ago. I found, I completed my run of Conan the Sumerian. Here is issue number one. This is issue number two. And uh, Corbin is featured inside. He uh, collaborates with another artist in here. He didn't do any of the cover art on these books, um, but he is featured in his artwork is featured inside. Uh, this is issue number two. In a previous video, I've showed you issue number three. So here's issue number four. Then we have issue number five. And to complete that run, we have issue number six. I'm sorry, not to complete it. To complete it, we have issue number seven. So uh, he was telling me, uh, well, let me back up. This was uh, Gotham City Comics in Mesa, Arizona. Huge store. They're located downtown Mesa huge back issue selection I've uh, shopped at this uh, the store before um, and the owner there was uh, 
explaining to me how somebody had come in and they had uh, brought in this whole run that they were getting rid of. So I left number three behind because I had it already. Um, but I was so happy to pick these up because these have been eluding me. I haven't been able to find just number three. Other than number three, I haven't seen uh, these in any comic book shop that I've been in thus far. Um, so big ups to uh, Gotham City Comics in Mesa, Arizona. I also picked up there Dark Horse number 16, which, you know, I could kick myself for because I also found that at Greg's Comics. And I literally bought these maybe... Oh, wait a minute. I bought these on the same day. How stupid am I? Because I went to Greg's first, and then I went over to Gotham City next and bought the same book. Have you ever done that? Let me know in the comments. Big ups to uh, Gotham City Comics. Now, we're going to go back and we're going to talk about Greg's Comics in Mesa, Arizona. Now, when I went in there, I asked, uh, there's a guy, Howard, who uh, works there. I believe he is the owner. And I was asking him for, did he have any underground comics? Because the type of books that Corbin uh, started out in were called underground comics. And as I've explained in uh, another video, those were comics that you didn't really find in your average uh, record. I mean, sorry, I'm a record collector. You didn't find them in your average comic book shop. So you found them in different types of uh, other types of businesses. Uh, first and foremost, a lot of head shops carried them and a lot of independent shops, some record stores. Um, but usually they were out of sight, you know, under the counter, in the back because a lot, uh, after a while they would get in trouble because a lot of these underground comics, they didn't go by the comic code. They were artists and writers that were free to um, express themselves however they wanted, do whatever kind of stories they wanted. So it was a lot of weird stuff, a lot of uh, humor, dark humor, um, uh, a lot of uh, sci-fi stuff. There were um, adult theme books. Um, they basically could just let their imagination run wild with whatever they wanted to uh, put in comic form. Um, so a lot of times when I go in these shops, I ask for underground comics or uh, cult comics. And that kind of, kind of gives the employees an idea of what I'm looking for, opposed to asking them, um, do you have any Richard Corbin books? Or, you know, just flipping through every book in the store. Um, while in Greg's Comics, I asked, and uh, the owner brought out uh, a long box, and it was completely full of underground comics. Now, I have picked up a lot of other titles for uh, other underground comics, and um, I'm going to do a separate video and show you some of those that I picked up recently, but... As far as the Richard Corbin books, I want to show you what I pulled out of there. And they were, um, a few of them were ones that were actually on my list uh, that I didn't have. And the first one I want to show you is Slow Death number two. Now I have a couple of the other Slow Death uh, Corbin books. Uh, not sure how long this run lasted, but a lot of the early. Um, issues uh, featured Corbin art and uh, Corbin's writing in them. This was also off of Last Gasp. Uh, and like, again, this was one of those uh, titles that had just some weird theme stuff, a lot of like hardcore sci fi, and just some outlandish stuff in them. Haven't yet looked through this one, not exactly sure what to expect. Uh, but yeah, this was one of those crazy, crazy titles um, that I was able to get. Next one I will show you, I was really excited to find this one because this is definitely on my list. Again, off of uh, this was off of Ripoff Press. This is Richard Corbin's, I don't really know how to even pronounce this, Ralph? 
Roof? Ralph? Somebody help me out with this. But I'm not sure. <laughs> Look how crazy that looks. I'm not sure what this book is about. Uh, I haven't done much research on it. And I haven't uh, yet flipped through the book to see what it was all about. But it was definitely one of those early books that was on my list that I was looking for. And I'm glad I knocked that out. Um, the prices on these I've seen kind of go all over the place. But uh, usually I've seen this for... 20 plus dollars um, and all these books are like you know fair condition uh, none of them are like super mint I'm a reader type of guy so I'm not looking necessarily for mint condition books but I was glad I was able to find that one uh, next up was Skull Comics number three uh, there's a Corbin story in this one uh, this is uh, another one that I was able to knock off the list. I'm so glad I found this really, really, really cool looking book. Look at that nonsense. This is crazy. Um, I'm not sure. This doesn't look like the uh, Corbin art on the outside, but he's definitely featured on the inside. So, yeah, looking forward to jumping into that one. Next up, Last Gasp. This is issue number six of Skull Comics. Again, Corbin art on the inside, a Corbin story. This was multiple stories in these Skull Comics. Multiple artists and writers. Glad I was able to knock this one off. These Skull Comics kind of usually cost a, a, a few more bucks than I'm, you know, than I'd like to spend. I see them kind of fluctuate between 15 and $40. Uh, that I've seen on different uh, websites, but I was glad I was able to find this one. I'm not sh exactly sure how many Skull Comics feature Richard's artwork, but I'm knocking them out one at a time. Now, in addition to uh, those books, I also found some books that I actually had already acquired, but the price was so right at Greg's place, Greg's Comics that I just couldn't leave these behind. So in a previous video, I showed you Slow Death issue number three. And I was able to find not one copy, not two copies, but three more copies of Slow Death number three, courtesy of Greg's Comics. Also in a previous, uh, video I showed you slow death issue number four which I was able to find another copy of that and I was also able to find issue number one on last gasp Fanagore issue number one and all these came from Grex comics in Mesa so I'm gonna do another video and it's going to be all about the other underground comics that I was able to find over at Greg's. So please stay tuned for that one. Um, that should be coming shortly after this video. And yeah, like I said, I've been coming across these things pretty steadily since I've been back in town. And uh, the mission is well on its way to being complete. Me, that's all for now. Make sure you uh, stay tuned for more uh, videos on Richard Corbin and my Richard Corbin comic collection so far. Peace.